Hello. Joining us today on World Denver Talks is Ms. Florence Ozor. Florence is visiting Colorado promoting the Bring Back Our Girls campaign from Nigeria. Welcome, Florence. Thank you very much, Laura, for having me. It's a really exciting time to be talking to you because of the news on Friday of the, the ceasefire Cease that has been announced mm -hmm. between Boko Haram and the federal government of Nigeria. Yes. Um, but before we get to that, um, tell us about the Bring Back Our Girls campaign and how you got involved. Oh, the, thank you. The Bring Back Our Girls campaign started when 276 girls were abducted from their school in Chibok, northeastern part of the country. 57 were able to escape on transit. 219 girls are still in captivity. It was born out of the need that um, it wasn't something that should have happened in the first place and haven't happened, not much was being done about it. So the hashtag was started by um, a woman in Nigeria, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, who tweeted, bring back our daughters at an event shortly after the abduction and it's caught on like wildfire. Then Adiza Bala Husman decided to take the protest of the outrage of social media and bring to the streets to further put pressure on my government, who at that point had not even admitted that girls were missing. So no one was looking for them. So that was how it started. I was in New York at the time of the abduction. I had just um, finished a two week internship with CH2M Ill. Mm -hmm. And when I heard the news, I thought it probably wasn't really true. Like seriously, how can 219 girls be taken just like that? And by the time I got back to Nigeria, I was shocked to discover that not only was it true, nothing was being done. Parents didn't know any updates whatsoever about their children. People didn't know anything. Nobody was looking for those girls. And for me, that was completely unacceptable. I had to join my voice with every other person who was talking about it on social media. And when it was time to hit the streets, I did. So the Bring Back Our Girls campaign started, I understand, because some women leaders came to the same recognition mm -hmm. that you did. Was there a moment when you said, I'm a business person, I, I'm not active in public affairs, but I have to take a stand? Was there one thing that, that pushed you over the edge, so to speak? I really didn't give it a thought until now. <laughs> Because for me, I think at that point, what was paramount on my mind wasn't my business affiliations or my interest. What was paramount on my mind was the tragedy that has occurred that shouldn't have occurred. And the only thing that I knew to do was if I could shout and get some help, I was definitely going to shout and worry about business later. This was something that is very dear to my heart and I didn't really consider any other thing. I just had to go for it. Well, that's very exciting. As, as a Western woman and as a woman who's active in public affairs, um, I and many of my counterparts mm -hmm. participated in the hashtag campaign and wow. we've kept it alive on social media. But there's always a, a question in our minds, mm -hmm. I think, as Western activists, um, is it helpful? Is that just us trying to make ourselves feel better? How did you feel about the fact that there was international participation in the campaign? I saw Senator Cory Booker from New Jersey post about it just the other day. It did a lot of good for the campaign, mm. yes. If there's any record of success or advantage for social media, I think this will be one of it. Without social media, we wouldn't have made as much impact as we did. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have had as much awareness about the issue. So for you and other Western women who um, joined us, it made a whole world of difference because after the outrage, while we were all tweeting about all of this, government was forced to admit that girls were missing. That's very So if all of that, if, if nobody was talking about it, if there wasn't any global reaction to it, if it wasn't being pushed so much on social media, all international media was on this issue, I don't think anybody would have been looking for the girls. But it, it forced our government to admit that girls were missing. It also forced them to start looking for them. The campaign, in addition to being active in social media, has had rallies and demonstrations mm -hmm. and events around the country in Nigeria. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, on the first um, protest we had was on the 30th of April. 
And after then, we've had several more protests. Mm -hmm. In fact, today is the 173 days of our daily protest marches and sit-outs in the Federal Capital Territory. We decided that it wasn't just for us to do one-day protests because our government was perhaps going to also forget. Mm -hmm. So we needed to keep the issue on the front burner. We needed to be in their faces until they get the right things done. For people who also had um, protest matches everywhere. You know, sometimes we just sit back and we're like, oh, there's a protest match going on in, in, in India. Oh, there's a protest match going on in Afghanistan. In fact, some people actually had the hashtag, bring back our girls photos from Afghanistan, Iraq, and you're wondering. It just kind of lets you know that people do have the tendency to put themselves behind and put other people before them. I think it also sends a message that we value women. Oh, we most definitely. The role of girls and women in society. The world definitely needs more women running things. Yeah. So back to current events. Mm -hmm. um, what it, how, how are you feeling about the possibility of the ceasefire being real and leading to their release? We're optimistic, but we're also very, very cautious. We hope that this time it turns out to be true. It's six months too long. Yeah. Girls should not be in such captivity. We're very, very hopeful, but if we have to go through other comments in the past, it's only wise to be cautious. And the media this morning is reporting that Boko Haram has broken the ceasefire several times since it was announced on Friday. On Saturday, on Saturday they, they attacked two villages and killed nine people. The ceasefire was announced on Friday. And between Saturday and yesterday, they had attacked three villages. So then you begin to wonder, maybe there's a different definition to ceasefire. Will this really happen? Mm -hmm. Will this really happen? Are these girls going to stay longer than they already have stayed? So we, we really don't know. But we do hope that every resources is put to making sure that our girls are out. Mm -hmm. It's too long. It's too long. So if the girls are released mm -hmm. anytime in the near future, um, one of the things that the Western media has talked a lot about is the, 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 the services that they'll need and the assistance and support mm -hmm. that they'll need from um, you know, mental health, physical health, um, perhaps the faith community, mm -hmm. social services. Um, talk to me about how those services are delivered in Nigeria. Do you feel as though that's, um, the, the, whether, are the, is there, are there preparations taking place? Yes. Um, now, in Bring Back Our Girls, we understand that we don't have the capacity to do everything that our girls will need when they're out. Mm. So, but we also understand that there, it's possible to reach out to partners. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of NGOs who are just waiting for mm -hmm. the girls to be released. As soon as they're released, they would be taken care of by all these NGOs who, they're not so much as running the streets with us. Mm -hmm. They're not so much as joining the protests with us. Theirs is just get the girls out and we'll take it up from there. Yeah. Because we would need to give them like a trauma therapy care. You don't want to go through all of that and just, they have to be properly taken care of before they're put back in school. Yeah. They have to be back to themselves. They have to not fear education. They have to be taught not to be in fear. They have to also be taught how they can continue to be whomever they choose to be without any fear. That is very critical because you don't want them to come out and they're, they're shells of themselves. You want to have them believe in themselves again before we can put them back in schools. Is there a role for the Big Bring Back Our Girls campaign perhaps in also communicating with society at large to ensure that these girls are not stigmatized after their, after their return? Yes, we have a plan, a post-release um, plan, and part of it is to go about sensitization. Mm -hmm. We don't want these girls to be stigmatized. Mm -hmm. It's very possible, especially in our country, in, a, in African setting, it's also very possible. Like for the 57 girls who escaped, mm -hmm. We needed to do a bit of that as well. 
That's why even now that they have gotten scholarships and they're in schools, we're trying to keep the media as far away as possible so that they can as much as possible fit into normal lives again and people don't have to, you know, stigmatize them for what they've been through. So definitely it's going to be a collective effort of everyone. Meaning if somebody comes to you and pass a comment about a girl who just passed, you pretty want to tell that person no. So we have to check each other, but then a lot of sensitization has to go on because it's not their fault. Yeah. They didn't wish this for themselves. They're completely innocent of all of this.